Hi, Jeff here, and welcome back to the Diva 4.0 tutorial series. Today we'll continue where we left off in our previous tutorial where we were looking at how to create custom materials, constructions, and glazings using the ArcSim components for Grasshopper. Today we'll look at how to create custom schedules that we can use for our energy modeling in ArcSim. To begin with our schedules, let's start with the um, schedule components panel here in the ArcSim tab. We'll start with uh, the way that schedules are, are structured is that they um, need a day, a week, and a year um, schedule component. So I'll go ahead and place some of these on the canvas. I'll start with the day. I'll go ahead and place the week here and then the year at the very end. So that one will be plugged into the other and then into the other to create a custom schedule. So let's begin by creating a, a day schedule. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, make a sort of modified office schedule. So I'll go ahead and call this um, occupancy office new. And I'll plug that into the name input. Next, I'll input the hours for our um, list of schedule values for this day. So the way that a day schedule works is that there would be a value for every hour of the day uh, and a list that's 24 hours long. And each value would be between zero or one. Zero meaning that there's no occupancy or no functionality, nothing's happening. And one would be full occupancy or um, in the case of lighting, full lighting. And you could also have in between values to show that there's sort of partial occupancy. So what I'll do is, um, just to not have to create a, a list completely from scratch, I'll right click on this input. You see that there is a set multiple numbers option here and I will, what I'm gonna do is I'll select the entire um, list of values and I'll hit control C and hit escape. And then in a new panel, I will paste these values in here. And you'll see that they are appearing here. Although I need to convert this list into a multi-line list and I can do that by right-clicking and selecting multi-line data. And so now this is converted to a list um, from zero to 23. And you see that there is um, there are some default values here. Um, I'll go ahead and mo modify these values. I'll, I'll make some changes here. Uh, so I'll just simplify things and uh, I will make it um, 0 0.0, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, um, and then I'll get rid of this uh, the the 0.5 values for the lunch break um, that that were indicated previously, and I will continue to scroll down here. Um, let's see, I'll make this um, 1.0 and then um, 0.7, and again 0.5. I think that would mean that if I scroll down. So at, at 6 p.m. there is partial occupancy and then um, half occupancy at, at 7 p.m. and then no one is there at night. So I'll go ahead and just plug this into the hourly input. Now I also want to have, um, so we can use this, this occupancy for seven days a week. And by doing this, I can place a, a merge component onto the canvas. We'll need to have seven day inputs in order to provide the sufficient amount of data for the week component to, to work. So I'll go ahead and just expand this um, so that there's seven inputs from D1 to D7. Now I can plug this in to all of the, um, the days. However, if I want this just to be a five day work week and have a weekend occupancy that is basically no, um, a zero occupancy or nothing happening during the weekend, I can create a new day schedule for that scenario. And I will scroll down here, go ahead and call this office and then I'll give it a WE suffix here, um, weekend and then new. And for the weekend, I'll just make these this all zeros. So I'll copy this first zero and I will paste it for all these values here. So now I have 24 values and they're all zero. So that means that for the weekend, there will be zero occupancy. And I'll use this weekend output, the day, and I'll go ahead and plug the day into these remaining two um, inputs for the merge component. Oops, I'll go ahead and um, get rid of these last two. So I have a, a regular occupancy, a normal occupancy for the work week and these five inputs, and then a weekend occupancy for these last two. Now I could plug this into days and I'll go ahead and keep using this name, Occupancy Office New. That's the name I want to give for the schedule, so I'll use it for the week schedule, and I'll also use it for the year schedule. Now, um, 
for the week schedule, this is where I, I say, okay, that now that I have this this daily schedule, um, I have a daily schedule for the five days of the week and then the weekend. How long does that last for? Is this a schedule that is basically continuous for the entire year, or is there a seasonal difference in the case of schools? But to keep things simple, I'll just go ahead and use the default value, which is if I hover over this from to input, it's from January 1st to December 31st. So the start month, um, the month of day, and then the end month day as four integers. And I, I will just continue to use this yearly, uh, this yearly input for this particular component. And I will plug the week output into the week input. And now in this yearly schedule component, you'll see that there is a graphic visualization um, for all the hours of the year of our occupancy schedule. You see that there's um, full full white um, tick mark for whenever there's full occupancy, and then there's partial gray for the partial values between zero and one. And you could see that um, there is a gap. There's Whenever there's a zero for the occupancy, it's black, and there's a gap for every weekend. And there are no changes along the course of the year because this does not have any seasonal variations. So it, this schedule doesn't doesn't take into account any break for the summer, which I could take in, which I could factor into this um, weekly schedule input right here. Great. Now that I've completed the schedule in my library component, which I've been inputting my custom materials and constructions, I can now take this year output, which is a if I hover over it. Um, one locally defined value, occupancy office new. I can just go ahead and plug that into schedule. Now if I place my thermal zone component onto the canvas just as a demonstration, by clicking on settings for my various um, elements for internal gains like people, equipment, and so forth, you'll see that as I scroll down this list, I now have um, occupancy office new appearing in my list. All right, now uh, there's another way to create a yearly schedule using the ArcSim components, and that's using a component that's called the Array Schedule. I'll go ahead and place that on the canvas. Now the Array Schedule also has a name input, and um, instead of having a weekly input, so instead of it being um, created through this incremental schedule components from day, week, and then year, it has an input for a series of 8,760 um, values for the hours of a year. And by default, there is a list of, um, if I go to set multiple numbers, you'll see that there is a, a list of all ones. Now there's a number of ways where we can generate a list of 8,760 hours to create an array schedule. Um, in, the, in the next tutorial, we'll look at um, how to actually link a diva simulation for, um, for, for daylighting and take um, hourly values for shading schedules and lighting schedules and input them into this ArcSim component. Another way that we can do this is by utilizing weather data for the entire year where we have um, inherently in this in these weather files lists of 8,760 hours. Now we can manipulate that data and use it to generate schedules that we can use for an energy simulation. One example of this would be to create, let's say, an availability schedule for cooling um, and a, an availability schedule for natural ventilation. And we'll do that by placing the weather component onto the canvas. Now this weather component, it takes an EPW file and it produces a series of outputs from that EPW file that you can utilize for energy simulations or for different types of data visualization. Now let's go ahead and just um, select our default Boston Logan Airport um, weather file. And we can output the dry bulb temperature and use that as the sort of threshold for creating a, an availability schedule um, for ArcSim. If I place a, a panel on the canvas and I plug in the dry bulb temperature, you'll see that we have a very long list um, and it contains temperature values for every hour of the year. We have some negative values because we're looking at these earlier early, early months in the winter and then it climbs up um, to higher values in the middle of the year, and this is in degrees Celsius. Now, um, we can parse out this data to say, uh, we wanna know when is the dry bulb temperature, what hours of the year is the dry bulb temperature under a specific um, temperature threshold? When is it below that level and when is it above? Um, for this tutorial, we'll, we'll say, when is it below um, 26 degrees Celsius? Um, which would be the time when we could use natural ventilation, and when is it above 26 degrees Celsius, which is when we could use cooling. 
So I'll place a, um, a larger than component onto the canvas. Now I'll plug the drywall temperature into this um, component and I'll compare the drywall temperature to a number um, to test against and I'll use the number 26. I'll plug that into the, the input here. Now we have a list of values um, for uh, whenever the temperatures are larger than 26 degrees and uh, whenever they're larger than or equal to um, 26 degrees. And these are in true and false kind of Boolean language. Now we can place an integer component onto the canvas to change these um, values to zeros and ones. So by hovering over it here, any false value will be a zero and any true value will be a one. Now I could plug this into the hours input of our array component, array schedule component, and I'll place a panel on the canvas and I'll call it cooling availability. <clears throat> and I'll place a, a panel on the canvas and I'll call it cooling availability. And you see that now um, all of those values where the temperatures are below 26 degrees are um, represented in black. And whenever it is greater than 26 degrees, we have these values represented in white. So we have some peaks in, um, in the middle of the summer where the outdoor temperatures are above 26 degrees. If we were to lower this threshold, for example, of 25 degrees Celsius, you'll see that there are a larger number of white values um, in our schedule. I can continue to modify this to see if um, you know, the, we can have an effect on our availability schedule. Um, I'll change it back to 26 just to keep things simple. And now we can use a smaller than component to um, basically get those temperatures where our, um, for the Boston Logan climate, to find those temperatures that are below, that are at or below 26 degrees. And I'll use another integer component and I'll use the less than or equal to 26. And I will place another um, availability schedule or an array schedule component onto the canvas. And I'll call this one no, um, nat vent availability. So this is basically the inverse of the cooling availability schedule. So what this will do is um, it could allow us to input into a, an arc sim, um, simulation for a thermal zone to um, ensure that we can uh, provide cooling for a space where we don't have any simultaneous natural ventilation and cooling. So that the natural, ven the natural ventilation will turn off when it, the outdoor temperature is too high and it will um, switch to cooling availability. And we can plug um, these schedules into our library. Um, get a hold down shift so that we have multiple inputs so we don't override the other schedule that we had input. And now both of these schedules are in our library database and by clicking on my zone settings under conditioning for cooling I could change the schedule by scrolling down and call it um, its control schedule cooling availability. And for ventilation if I wanted to turn this on and give it a schedule I can um, indicate natural ventilation availability. Okay, in this tutorial, we looked at how to create custom schedules using the day, week, and year method using the ArcSim components. And then we also looked at the array schedules by providing uh, an input list of um, yearly hour values. And um, so thanks a lot for watching this tutorial and I hope you'll join us for the next one.